The American Freedom Train from 1975 to 1976 was the setting stone for the future of steam excursion trains on the main line in the United States. The iconic trio of steam locomotives, Southern Pacific 4449, Texas and Pacific 610, and Reading 2101 all took turns pulling the most famous steam excursion train. However, 2101's narrative is a very unconventional and overlooked chapter of the American Freedom Train. She was the centerpiece for the 30-day miracle, the fastest steam locomotive restoration in history. But how it happened is a story about the biggest last-minute scramble in the history of the American Freedom Train. Here is the story of the 30-day miracle with Reading 2101 featuring the man himself, Ross Rowland. First, some context is essential to comprehend how Reading 2101 even got to this point. Ross Rowland and his team were working on restoring Southern Pacific 4449 in the Burlington Northern's Hoyt Street Roundhouse in Portland, Oregon for opening day in Wilmington, Delaware on April 1st of 1975. The restoration of 4449 was very treacherous. One such example was when a crack was discovered in 4449's crown sheet. In many steam locomotives, this would result in retirement or dropping the project because crown sheets are extremely hard to repair and cannot be replaced without taking the whole engine apart. It is the same reason why Canadian Pacific 1278 is not in steam after her crown sheet failed in 1995 due to low water levels. But the crew restoring the locomotive found a welding expert named Joseph Crumley who managed to use an old welding technique to repair the crown sheet. Without Crumley's repair, 4449 would never have returned to the main line. After the close call to disaster, the restoration continued. But in December 1974, Conrail notified the crew of the American Freedom Train that 4449 was too tall for the tunnels in the northeastern United States. The, the Foundation wasn't notified by Conrail until December of 1974. And we were already committed to opening the train April the 1st, 1975. So there was uh, uh, very little time left uh, between the notification of the daylight not coming east and our commitment to open the train in Wilmington, Delaware on April 1st. Many around Roland wanted a diesel locomotive to pull the train to save money and to get the train out on time. But Roland balked at the request. He set out on a mission to find another steam locomotive to run the train. The only other candidate was Nickel Plate Road 763. The crew thought about using the engine and to double-head it with sister locomotive Nickel Plate Road 759. But both locomotives were in poor condition. 763 had been languishing in a city park exposed to the elements while 759 suffered boiler flue damage after water dripped into the boiler and froze the flues during the winter of 1973 to 1974. The group decided not to risk it and went against using the duo. But the foundation still had to find a replacement locomotive. Eventually, Roland and his crew found two of the original four Reading Ramblers, 2100 and 2101. They were both in storage at Strigel's Scrapyard in Baltimore, Maryland. And just a few days later, both locomotives had a new and renewed life ahead of them. Roland subsequently bought both locomotives, having known about their presence for a while before the American Freedom Train. I had known for some years that they were sitting in that uh, scrapyard in Baltimore. All the rail fans of the East knew that. After finding the Chessy Riverside engine terminal to restore the locomotives, the two were moved to the site one month after their purchase on February 27, 1975. After both engines were moved to the shops, 2101 was found to be in better condition than her prototypical sister, 2100. Therefore, 2100 was used as spare parts for 2101. We examined both locomotives carefully to decide which one would be the candidate to restore and which one would be the 
parts reservoir, uh, and it was determined by the boiler maker and the machinist that the 2101 was in better shape than the 2100. So that's the way we decided which one would get restored. On February 28th, Work to restore 2101 commenced, with Roland hiring as many metal workers and volunteers as possible to try and get 2101 up and running as fast as possible. Under the leadership of the late Mr. Bill Benson of Akron, Ohio, and he employed a full-time crew of approximately 45 workers uh, who worked three different shifts, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, supplemented by an army of about 150 volunteer rail fans, most of whom came on weekends, some of them during the week, but most of them on weekends. So uh, on Saturdays, we, you, you might find as many as 125 people working on the locomotive or the tender or the parts engine 2100 at one time. Since Roland was more well known because of the 1969 Golden Spike exhibition with Nickel Plate Road 759, and the influx of publicity for his American Freedom Train, many volunteers came out in droves to help pitch in and get 2101 running in time for opening day. To house some of the people working on the project, Roland and his team set up a very unorthodox sleeping quarters. We had a slumber coach there they could sleep in. And we had a dining car that served three meals a day. So we would feed them and, and house them. And uh, about 20, well, 15 to 20 rail fan volunteers from around the country came and stayed uh, seven days a week, uh, slept in the slumber coach and ate in the dining car and uh, worked full time seven days a week on the project. The norm for the crew of 2101 would be to wake up at 6 a.m. for breakfast and to get to work, having lunch at noon, dinner at 6 p.m., and finishing work at 9 p.m. The crew of the engine also had a wide variation of people from all walks of life, ranging from high school students, office workers, career railroad folk, and even the Chessy Systems vice president. Round the clock and every day, 2101 was inspected, taken apart, welded, painted, and fitted. Unlike 4449's restoration, however, the crew of 2101 had very few hiccups while restoring 2101. Their only priority was just getting the locomotive up and running, but nevertheless, 2101 did have some mechanical hurdles that made the restoration difficult. By far the hardest was the superheater in 2101. It was in such bad shape that it had to be replaced, and Roland needed one within days. One of the manufacturers that Roland got in touch with said that it would be another nine months until a replacement could arrive. When General Motors joined the project as our second sponsor, Pepsi was our first, General Motors was our second, General Motors had told me, if you ever hit a roadblock or something you need a favor for, feel free to call us and we'll see if we can help you. When we hit the roadblock on the superheater units, I called Mr. J.J. McDonald, at General Motors and said, here's the problem we got. Would you think it might be possible if your chairman called the CEO at Bad Duncan Wilcox and asked him for a favor? And he said, yeah, I, I think we can do that. So they did that. The next day, Bad Duncan Wilcox called Bill Benson back and said, I don't know who you know or what you know, but you must know some high people in very high places because we have orders from our Chief Executive Officer to make those bends for you <clears throat> this week. They'll be on the dock for you and ready to pick up this Saturday. Come get them. In record time, Roland and his crew got brand new superheaters from General Motors and installed them onto 2101. The rest of the hurdles in 2101 were relatively minor in comparison, but the engine's internal shape was in great condition and already broken in. With the help of hundreds of people, the engine was worked on and then the finishing touches began only a few days before opening day. In late March, painting began on the locomotive. The original paint scheme for 2101 wasn't these two, but this. 2101 was pulled out of the shed and was already partially fired up. However, the workmen, much to their surprise, found that the red stripe on the tender 
was a little more orange. The green light was given with the locomotive still wet with paint during the inspection and steam up. 2101 made two test trips to get the locomotive up and running that went to Hagerstown, Maryland. However, one of the last hurdles of the foundation was they had to get cab signals on 2101 since they would be running on Amtrak's Northeast Corridor. However, the FRA gave the group a special exemption which saved the crew time and money. They were given a waiver to operate on the Northeast Corridor without cab signals and we went under our own power with no diesel helpers. And to my knowledge, that was the last revenue steam powered train on the Northeast Corridor. At the same time, the American Freedom Train was getting its final assembly at Cameron Station in Baltimore with the help of Southern Railway NW2 number 1035. On March 29th, Roland and his crew of 2101 barely made it to Camden Station. A Southern Railway GP38 number 2773 was waiting on hand. With the T1 at the station, the final test for 2101 was to take the train to Alexandria Station. However, many members of 2101 considered 2101 less than reliable, as she was restored so quickly. But 2101 came through, and after a ribbon-cutting ceremony at Alexandria Station, she took the train to Wilmington, Delaware for its first display date on April 1st, 1975. On that April morning, the American Freedom Train was ready for its first display date in Wilmington, completing the story of Reading 2101's restoration. Delaware Governor Sherman Tibbet was in attendance along with NBC's Today Show host, Gene Shalit, where Roland gave public interviews to the press about the train. On April 5th, 2101 took the Freedom Train to Albany, New York, and the rest is history. The story of 2101's restoration is nothing short of incredible and was a final hurrah to the fine art of steam locomotive restoration. However, there are some skeptics to the restoration of 2101. Many cite the engine's operational status on the Iron Horse Ramblers in the 1960s, the regulatory climate of steam engines before heavier regulation, and her spotty finished restoration. While it is true that 2101 was operable on the Iron Horse Rambles as it was used for standby power, and the quick restoration of the engine was due in part to the locomotive not being in terrible condition when she was restored, many changes brought on to preservation groups and railroad steam programs by the federal government have made the likelihood of a 30-day miracle almost impossible due to the need for better inspections and more regulation. In today's age, restoring a steam locomotive in a month would never fly due to the amount of people working on the project would be minimal compared to the scope of 2101's crew and the process of steam locomotive inspections today. It is also very unlikely that a non-profit group or a tourist railroad would receive the favors and funds that Roland and his crew did when restoring 2101. But either way you slice it, the story of Reading 2101's 30-day restoration is terrific. I think the truth be told, the chances of that kind of a miracle being pulled off today are probably near zero. The American Freedom Train also paved the way for more iron horses to return to steam. Although 2101 is no longer under steam, it truly was amazing to have the locomotive run after an incredible restoration. Today, you can see 2101 at the Baltimore and Ohio Railroad Museum and our iconic paint scheme of the American Freedom Train is still on her to this day. Reading 2101 and Freedom Train No. 1 will always be remembered as the 30-day miracle steam locomotive. <laughs>